Well, thank you for tuning in. This is Matt Santos of the Mile High Show, and you are listening to episode 161. Uh, I am sitting down today with two musicians, one you are familiar with through this show, Mr. Darren Mahoney, owner of Mahoney Guitars, where you can uh, get guitars custom made, repaired, or maybe learn how to play one that you already got. Uh, DarrenMahoney.net is where you can find out information on Darren and also on his Facebook page, Mahoney Guitars. Uh, search that. The the uh, link is in the show notes there. But Darren records with and tours with uh, a very uh, accomplished musician, a, a flautist, uh, if I'm saying that right, uh, a flutist, a a person who plays the flute, Miss Sherry Finzer. Now, Sherry uh, is not only a an accomplished musician of her, in her own right, but she is also a promoter of other musicians, and she searches the country and and the globe looking for uh, like minded musicians in the new age and jazz field. And uh, she promotes them through her company. Let me pull it up here to make sure. RS Promotions US. And they, they are found at rspromotionsus.com. And also through her recording company. She started her very own recording company. And it is thriving. As Darren says, she is a force to be reckoned with, not only in this genre, but in, in, recording, in the recording industry in general. And her company is Heart Dance Recordings at heartdancerecordings.com, based out of Phoenix. Now, uh, in past episodes, Darren has told us a little bit about his tour through Colorado with Sherry and a couple other musicians and a videographer who is putting together a documentary of their tour through Colorado that took place this past summer. But he toured with Sherry. They talk a little bit more about that, about the... uh, the uh, motivation to fi- uh, to open and, and start Heart Dance Recordings and how she promotes her artists. And, and it's just a good conversation. Uh, you heard a little bit of Darren and Sherry playing in Darren's, uh, Darren's office there in Chino Valley. Uh, that will also be included on our on our um, on our outro. Uh, also in the show links are links to Sherry's. Uh, YouTube channel where she has lots of different recordings and video clips and all that good stuff. There's links to the websites for Heart Dance Recordings and RS Promotions US as well as SherryFinzer.com and also a YouTube link to Heart Dance Recordings. So check out her artists. They uh, they are all over the globe and uh, and uh, and then she plays both locally and around the country, with uh, with Darren and also solo, and uh, make it a point to catch Darren playing. He is all over this area, uh, in the Prescott area, playing in and around town and sitting in on some open mics. He talks a little bit about those. He sat in with the Ping Brothers at Thumb Butte Distillery recently. You can also see him haunting the row on uh, on during the week and playing over at uh, Jersey Lilies and... Uh, and the birdcage, and uh, and all over town. Uh, so look for Darren Mahoney, look for Sherry Finzer, and please enjoy this conversation on episode 161. Before I cut to it, though, one quick thing. Last uh, episode we sat down with, actually we drove, with Justin Tejan, a stand-up comic out of Phoenix, and uh, unfortunately I posted that episode after I had originally planned to, so some of those promos that I gave out had already came and passed. So uh, this is what I want you to do. If you want to see Justin take the stage and make people laugh, uh, Thursday, February 22nd at 8 p.m. at Stand Up Live in Phoenix. StandUpLive.com is where you can find out information about them, or just Google Stand Up Live Phoenix. Uh, that is a stand-up live comedy showcase on Thursday, February 22nd at 8 p.m. Stand-up live in Phoenix, featuring, among others, last week's guest, Justin Tejan. So uh, check out Justin. Check out local comics. Support local artists like Darren Mahoney and, uh, and Sherry Finzer. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Darren and Sherry, because uh, I sure did. So... Uh, sit back and enjoy.
next thing I like to do is just make sure people know where they could reach you. Mm-hmm. So website, social media, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you got. Oh, dear. Oh, that's dramatic. I like that. <laughs> that was a nice. Is that our new theme music? That was a nice intro. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and here she is. She reckons her. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Uh, websites where people can find out more about me would be sherryfinzer.com. Spell your last name, please. F like Frank, I N like Nancy, Z like zebra, E R. All righty. And then uh, you are also, we'll get into it obviously. Your uh, other website is for the company? Um, yeah, so I have the record label, Heart Dance Recordings. So that's heartdancerecordings.com. And then the promotions company is rspromotionsus.com. Nice. Let me get, and then we got Mr. Darren. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Co-host for the day. I was telling you earlier, I was down uh, down in Phoenix last night. Justin Tejan, comic from Phoenix, uh, will promo this. He will be at Stand Up Live February 22nd for one of his bigger shows. He's featured, I forget who he's featuring for, but... Uh, so that'll be our plug-in, but that's where I was last night talking with Justin down in Phoenix, and uh, my plan was to get back up to uh, our little burger, Chino Valley, by like nine ten o'clock, and, and that uh, didn't happen, did it? At uh, three forty-five, <laughs> as I was coming off the freeway by the beautiful roundabouts, I realized I'm going to have a long day today. So, Darren, you get to be the co-host. If you start hearing me <laughs> snoring, just pick it up. This has been a lifelong run. dream of mine to be a co-host. <laughs> To finally be able to kick Leslie out of the box. <laughs> Leslie Earl Lyman, Leslie, I am now the co-host. Not a serial killer, not Earl Lyman. <laughs> not that nobody knows of. I, I, yeah, it's an ongoing uh, reference in the show. I, Les Lyman, who's on this show more, more I have than met most. Les. Yes, oh, you have? You met Les? I have, yes. When I first met him, <coughs> excuse me, we did a podcast over at Far From Folsom, or... Whatever it was called back, I forget it's changed. Coyote name. Joe's. Nah, I don't yeah. remember. It was one of the incarnations, and I had met him previously. We talked very shortly, set up the interview, and then when I was interviewing him, I called him everything from Leslie Earl Lyman to Leslie Earl Jones, James Earl Lyman, <laughs> James Jones. Earl Ray. It was every th- I, everything but Michael J. Fox. I think I dropped in, and not intentionally. It just kept slipping out. Uh, and as every serial killer has to have three names, that's what I've dubbed him. Leslie, not a serial killer, Earl Lyman. He hates You got I me going that. through them all right now. John <laughs> Wilkes Booth. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so anyway, I'm a little punchy today. Uh, I, uh, I was up way too late and up way too early all at the same time. So Sounds like a musician. Forgive me already for the wandering nature of my brain today but darren what do you got coming up darren mahoney what's well, up with you lately we've uh yeah i've been uh, working on a solo album i'm fixing to go down on february 9th to um uh cass attaway studio there mm-hmm. and uh, record a couple more songs and um, i'm hoping to have a release i think we were talking late spring nice um yet to be titled Probably it's been too long, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got that going on. I've been just doing, you know, doing the, the the repairs up here and getting that going, and as well as giving lessons and playing out. And I'm playing out, you know, starting with Becky Dalkey and Leslie Earl, the serial killer, and uh, you know, just t- making my rounds. And uh, like I said, it's been almost one year since we moved up here. Nice. And there hasn't been one, has? one regret. Yeah. One year. No. Yeah. When did you move? Uh, spring, it was probably a year ago. Huh? Yeah, it was <laughs> a year ago. Spring. No, no. I moved it up here winter. the end of just end of, about the end of January. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Do you miss me? It just yet? it just seems <laughs> like forever. I miss Darren. Yeah. Well, Sherry, tell me give give us a little bio on on, on <sighs> you. Are you an Arizona native or no? Um, I was born in Syracuse, New York. Ooh, cold. Moved to Rochester, New York when I was 13. Kodak. Kodak <laughs> and cold. And uh, lived there until 2005. Um, got married, raised my two boys there. And um, my husband had a job offer to come out here to Phoenix in 2005. And I, we were really tired of the snow. Yeah. Um, 
We'd had enough. <laughs> one extreme to the other. My goodness. Yeah. So like you were mentioning earlier, moving somewhere and not knowing yeah. anywhere anybody. Um, that that was my story <laughs> now, when I moved here. Music always been a part of your life? Uh, well, it was in the younger years um, through school. And um, I was classically trained. And pr- that was pretty much all I did was go to school and practice. And um Got burned out (laughs) by it. Family situation growing up. A lot of brothers and sisters. Just one sister, younger. One sister, younger. Mm -hmm. Music also, musically inclined as well? Um, No, my sister played the flute also, um, but didn't really stick with it. She had a love for horses. uh, Yeah, so she's got a horse farm outside of Rochester. Oh, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad musically inclined? Not at all, no. no. <laughs> they could never figure out where it came from. <laughs> wow. Inter- now, okay, now, I, I was joking with you in, in a was a text or Facebook message right? when we were setting this up, but not jokingly, I, how do you, what is a person that plays a flute called? <laughs> Well, Fla- you could say <laughs> flutist or flautist. Flu- I, what, I, I spelled it about five different ways. And, and you got to be the lady careful because the sometimes if you're at a Mexican restaurant and you say that, you get a flauta. <laughs> <laughs> Why the flute? Was that was that what you started with? Was that what you played at Yeah, there age? was a day that, um, you know, you if you wanted to be in the band, you could come and look at the instruments. Uh-huh. And I saw the flute and thought, oh, it's shiny because I'm always attracted to it. <laughs> It's a lot easier than carrying shiny, a cello. Shiny objects. And uh, it was small, so I thought, oh, well, it's easy to carry on the bus. Um, <laughs> so that's that's why I chose it. But once I started playing it, I just fell in love. And At, I, at what age? What did, when did uh, it was fifth grade, so was that maybe 10, 10, yeah. 11? Have you, you <laughs> talk about carrying the instruments. You, Woody Allen fan at all? <laughs> oh, yeah. I've Take the that. money and run. Have yeah. you ever seen that? Yep. He played the cello in the marching band. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Wrong instrument. <laughs> now, when uh, oh, we are not, I grew up, I'm the youngest of five, six, five mm-hmm. living. Wow. Um, not a musically inclined family at all. Nobody really played uh, instruments. I've got some cousins who play and, and tour as musicians, but in our immediate family, none. And I don't know why. But in third grade was in our elementary school was when you can first sign up for band, mm-hmm. and I don't know why, but I wanted to play the saxophone. Yeah, and I begged my mom, "Can I please play this?" Oh, you won't play it. You won't play. It. You won't, you won't. So I begged and begged as we were going, and finally I convinced her and my dad to let me play. Well, by the time that happened. All the sign-ups were done. So I went in and asked for a saxophone, all out of saxophones. Aww. Okay, how about a guitar? No. Nope. Well, what's left? We have one violin. Oh, violin. I thought you were so going to say tuba. <laughs> no. So I went home without the violin because I wasn't, what do I, I'm playing with I'm Jack uh-huh. Benny. And my mom goes, where's your saxophone? I said, well, they were out. Well, what else did they have? I said, all they had was a violin. She says, <laughs> she says you begged us. And we said, yes, so go get the violin. I, said, I don't want to play violin. She says, you're going to play violin. <laughs> I hated I it. I see a movie here. I <laughs> hated it. Third How long grade. did you play? I, Just the one well, year? Uh, no, the worse. <laughs> I went to practice every day after school, and I practiced at home after school. And my dad worked nights, so he would get off. We were already in bed, you know, 11, 1130 at night. And then he'd be asleep when we went to school, so... A lot of times we would see him on the weekend, unfortunately. And uh, I had my first recital. I want to say it was about four weeks in. Wow. The recital was going to be on Monday after school. And uh, so Saturday afternoon, my dad's trying to take a nap. And he goes, go get your violin and practice. I said, I don't want to practice. He goes, you got a recital on Monday. You're going to practice. I played for him in the living room for about five minutes. And he says, <laughs> okay, you don't have to play anymore. <laughs> You don't have to go. So the next Monday, I got to turn it in, and I never played the receipt. Your dad grabs the wire cutters and cuts he the said, string. He says, you are not a musician. Aww. So since then, my, my musical abilities are limited to uh, singing in the shower, which has caused complaints from the neighbors on occasion. Not here. We live far enough away. But in an apartment, but literally, the neighbor knocked on the wall one day and says, please stop. Uh, and... Uh, Occasionally being able to play a CD in the car without making it skip, and that's about as much. Well, you know, as I it's never get. too late. 
Yes, it is. <laughs> I've had, I've, no, I've had adult students before uh, when I was teaching, so it's not too late. Uh, you if, have Darren right here to teach you the guitar. If I learn one more thing, whether it be a skill or somebody's name, one of my old friends will have to die because my brain is full. Just can't take no more. It's just that. up to... <laughs> That's me now. When I'm playing, people are like, well, learn this song. And I'm like, okay, what song do I need to kick out of my head to put <laughs> yeah. another one in there? Yeah, defragment that yeah, brain. Yeah. Man. Get re- purge some of those old files. Yeah. So you playing at at tennis, mm-hmm. and did you know right off the bat that this was going to be a lifelong passion with you? I, I think so. Um, the band director wanted me to take private lessons, so you know I started private lessons. I think that first year in band because they saw the skill that I had. Yeah, and. Um, by the end of sixth grade, uh, I remember they asked me to play in the spring recital a solo oh, wow. uh, with piano. And it was a college-level solo. It was a Handel sonata. So like in two years, I was, <laughs> I was playing college-level music. So Because I just practiced. Goodness. I was just, that was my love. I would just go home and do homework and go to my room and practice. So was the word prodigy hours. ever used when you were no, that young? No, I don't think so. No. no. No, but I just, yeah, well, hmm. through school, that's what I did. So classical was what mm-hmm. you were playing. Now, what, I, I, I'm I'm a, a numbskull when it comes to, I got to boil things down to the lowest common denominator. What, how would you classify the music that you're playing with, with Darren? Um, this music we're doing now would fall more in new age or new contemporary age. instrumental. Nice. Mm-hmm. Is there, is that what? your passion has brought you to or do you still like to do a wide variety of different things? I don't do so much classical anymore. I still play for for weddings here and there and that would be more uh-huh. classical music. Um, but after I moved here, well, out to Arizona in 2005, um, again, I knew nobody yeah. and it was like, oh, now what am I going to do with my you know musical career? So I had auditioned for some orchestras, some community orchestras, but like once you get into an orchestra or a symphony, usually you're there until you either choose to leave or you pass away. <laughs> so there, there weren't a lot of um, openings for or, flutists or flautists. <laughs> or you fall down like I just knocked the recorder down. Oh, uh, yeah. is it all good? Yeah, it's good. I'm just, I'm a knucklehead. I keep glancing at these. I'm uh, paying attention, but this is not. If this was a camera, I wouldn't have to look at it. It's a recording instrument. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, um. I started teaching at uh, a little school in Awatuki called Music Makers. I was teaching lessons and met a guitarist named Rick Flouting. And he was doing some jazz and, and some new age music. And so I did some things with him and he did some recording with me on my first album, Desert Journey, which was a little more Latin. And um, so I just started getting exposed to other musicians. Yeah. I played with a harpist who didn't want to do classical anymore and wanted to dabble in jazz. So that was great because we could experiment together in her living room and, you know, make r- huge blunders yeah. <laughs> and nobody would know. And um, uh, so th- that was a big learning curve for me, as well as playing with a flamenco guitarist out here who said, OK, well, you need to learn to improvise. <laughs> um, nice. And that was a really big scary moment because <laughs> classical musicians always have the music in front of them you're yeah. always reading the music and to learn to play by ear and learn to improv that was just a huge huge stepping stone for me really make it your own how much mm-hmm. interpretation is there when you're playing a classical piece or is it do you you're stick kind of in a to, box yeah. yeah yeah there's a certain style that you're supposed to play a box sonata in you know um so you don't have a lot of freedom there the sheet music dictates what you do yeah play loud here soft here play this note short play this note long um kind of like for actors a lot of playwrights will be you don't change a syllable you don't Mm -hmm. others will let you improvise and things like that but in the case of classical you it's the tried and true and that's what you stick to yeah pretty pretty much much. pretty much now (laughs) again my my Association, my my knowledge of a flute pretty much ends with Jethro Tull, I think. Is, <laughs> but the, the, and we'll Everybody post knows Jethro Tull. we'll pay, post some <laughs> photos up in our show notes at milehighshow.com. Uh, but what we're, what I'm looking at here next mm-hmm. to you and behind you is other than one of those, 
I don't recognize these to be flutes. Can you that that is what this is traditionally, the one you recognize. Yeah, that would be the traditional mm-hmm. what I would know, what a knucklehead would know as a flute. Well, right. That's because this is the C flute, which would be used in a band or uh-huh. orchestra. So uh, they can be made out of many different materials. This one's made out of um, 14 karat gold. And it's oh made by goodness. the Pearl Company, who many people know for their drums. Pearl drums? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so they make a whole series of flutes as well, uh, intermediate and professional. And then, so this one is a, f- a fourth lower. Um, so this is an alto flute and the alto flute can be played two ways with a curved head joint or the straight head joint. I play it with a curve just cause it's an easier reach. So my arm's not reaching out so far. This one's made by Yamaha. Um, and it's a gold brass material. So like your saxophone that, that you wanted got. to play would have been made out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it gives it a nice warm color, nice uh, warm tone. Um, this one is made by a company called Guo out of Taiwan. That what, The first thing that comes <clears throat> to my mind there is... Uh, Home Depot, the kitchen sink department. No, I was thinking <laughs> Stormtrooper. Oh, there you go, <laughs> yeah. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun. Um, well... This one has a name, and it's Snow White because she's white. <laughs> um, they make flutes out of composite materials. They also make them out of uh, metal, but um, this is a bass flute. So it's one octave lower than the C flute that we started with. And if this were made out of metal, it would be much, much heavier. Mm-hmm. So the and composite material keeps it lighter. Three and a half feet? Is that um, about? Yeah, actually, that's about three and a half feet. Yeah. So this one has to have a curved head joiner. It would be way <coughs> yeah. too long to reach. Or you'd need the rest of the band to hold it. Yes, as you- or that. But a lot of bass flute players, um, you know, they have to sit and play, and then there's, um, there's a thing called a crutch that they rest the flute on, you know, because it gets gotcha. heavy. Um, so this is light. I can stand and play, move around with it. And, and you say composite, like what? what what's it made uh, out of? Oh, plastic. Pla- okay. Plastic. It's, a lot of people ask if it's PVC. It's it's not. Um, I started playing, actually, I have a C flute out of this material by the same company. And I started uh, playing these flutes for my outdoor performances. So I didn't have to take my really good flutes gotcha. out. Gotcha. The gold risk. one. They handle yeah. the weather a little bit better. They yeah. do, and mm-hmm. um, you don't have to worry about the intonation so much. Like Intonate, with, well, educate me. I'm sorry. Well, with um, with the metal flutes, mm-hmm. if it's cold, the pitch is going to drop and go flat. So you're going to have a hard time gotcha. staying in okay. tune. If it's hot, it's going to go sharp. Interesting. Yeah, D- which is vice versa with the guitar. I was going to say, is that something a cold you have to worry guitar about? is yeah. everything's tightened up, so it's sharper. Yeah. And huh. with, when it's warm, the woods relax, so things go flat. Interesting. Now, does that change with uh, electric guitars as well? Oh yeah. Well, and in, in, in a sense that the strings are, you know, steel gotcha. or nickel. Um, and if when I'm up on when I go up on stage to perform, regardless of what venue we're in, outdoors or indoors, the climate when you walk in, you're supposed to get your instruments out and let them acclimate to the room. Yeah. And then when I start playing, well, obviously my fingers, and as well, I'm sure with the flute, you're now touching it, and the warmth of your fingers and that are causing the, the the flute to relax, as well as the guitar, the strings. Now, if I start, if I tune up and I go up on stage and I start playing, by the end of that song, my guitar is flat. Hmm. So I have to retune it. But what I do is I warm my string ups before I go out and play. Does altitude play a difference in... In, not for guitar. No, not for pitch. I don't think. I think for your breath, for breathing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had heard, and I don't know this to be fact. Like if you travel, like in an airplane or something, it won't. No, pressure has nothing to do, no? especially with the guitar. The hole with the acoustic, the the, the sound hole, uh-huh. the pressure is equal on each side, on okay. all over. Um, cold. Um, as long as the guitar is in the case, and you turn the tune the strings down, mm-hmm. um, that's for pretty much baggage handlers that like to toss gotcha. your instruments around so you don't have all that tension on the neck so when it hits it whiplashes and i i can't tell you how many guitars i get in the shop with crack headstocks mm. but same with uh i'm sure with the flutes 
the holes. It's it's there's nothing yeah. that would seal up anything gotcha. that would cause a pressure collapse inside. Now that leaves <laughs> that leaves one big more. Bertha. <laughs> <laughs> you see those on Peter Bilt's, the big muffler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody said you got to give her a name, and it's like, well, she's just Big Bertha. <laughs> uh, but that's the contrabass flute, and that is two octaves lower than the C flute. One octave lower than the bass. Uh, this is made by Pearl as well, the Pearl Company. Um, and that one's just a, probably a, a nickel uh, bass with a silver plating on it. That is very impressive. That looks like something that you might find at Thumb Butte Distillery. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. In the still. Filling yeah. up the next, uh, brewing up the next batch of scotch or something there. Now, yeah. now you when you started playing, was it the, the and I, correct me, I'm, is it the C flute? Is that what you mm-hmm. said? Yeah. That's kind of the traditional, yes. what you would have started. How soon were you working into the other, other formats? Um, it wasn't until probably around the year 2000, 2001. Oh, wow. Um, I joined a flute choir when I was back in uh, Rochester. So a flute choir is like a flute orchestra. So mm-hmm. imagine an orchestra, but it's all flutes instead of strings. Uh, so uh, people will take orchestral arrangements and rearrange them for flute choir. Nice. So I was asked to play on the alto flute. So I did a lot of alto flute playing there. And then, oh, when did I get the bass flute? Did I even have that when we started playing? I, don't... I think when we did Transformation... So that was around 2013. Yeah. I was at one of, well, there's every year there's a national flute convention <laughs> that thousands of flutists flock to. Um, so that's where I saw the booth with these flutes and I tried yeah. it and I was like, this is amazing. And the cost was so much less than a metal flute yeah. too. So Real rich and warm sounding. Yeah. And I think the composite material actually sounds more like a wood flute you know Hmm. it's a warmer color um so then i started playing the bass flute and um used that on transformation was the first Mm -hmm. recording Mm -hmm. now how did you two cross paths oh do you want to tell that story well um i had uh, been invited i was playing with a country artist at the time mary hoffman and we got invited up to greer arizona uh, to play the benefit up there for the firefighters, the Wallow Fire that went through there that burned, you know, part of New Mexico and mm-hmm. into Arizona, real devastating. What what year are we talking? That about? was good lord. Is that two thousand eleven? Eleven, ten, or eleven? Or ten, maybe. Yeah. And uh, so, me and my wife, we drove up, and uh, all the performers got a cabin while we were up there. And I remember, actually, the first time I saw you, we pulled up to the Molly Butler Lodge and we had to get a hold of our contact to find out, you know, where we were staying and what our times were, what we were playing. And as we pulled in, we pulled up to this red little convertible car and it had this little, uh, uh, this dog. Um, I want to say, it's not a pit bull. What Sally? Sally was a, She's, it was a pit bull. Pit bull. And, uh, this, this girl got out of it before we did. And I looked down and I, you know, I, I just didn't pay no attention to it. And after she went up, I thought, well, we should probably go up. So we went up and we, you know, did that. Well, the next day we were performing uh, with the artist I was playing with, and the stage manager came up and says, "Would you guys mind if this flute player came up and did a couple songs with you guys?" You know, and you were playing what? I was playing country, country music. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was full on country, and. Uh, so we looked over and we, me and Mary see her sitting off the side and I'm, you know, it's Mary's show and I'm like, if she's okay with it, I'm okay yeah. with it. So she came up and I think the first song we did was uh, Stand By Me by Benny King. Yeah. yeah. This is where I'm learning to play by ear. Yeah. And this was it's her very, improvising. very helpful. <laughs> and you know, what I liked about it is uh, here's this flute player and she walked right up in between and owned it. I mean, she had the the pose, the but she was really getting into it. And then we did something more by Sugarland, and she stayed with us on that. Well, when she got off the stage, as she was getting off the stage, I'm kind of looking over, going, I, I, I gotta, Wait. you know, I gotta find out a way yeah. to get to uh, talk to her because I myself was working on an album and just had some ideas, and I wanted to see if she'd be interested. I didn't know if she was into this kind of yeah. music, the new age, the the Wyndham Hill kind of stuff. So as we got done, you know, people are still clapping. I'm running off the side of the stage. <laughs> and I went over and I handed her my business card. I said, hey, I really liked what you're doing. 
I'm working on something. Yeah. I wonder if you'd be interested. And we, I don't think we really talked much after that. No. We just handed really. out cards, and then it was about a couple weeks later. A yeah, week because later. I was working on my Sanctuary 2 album, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, I, I think I hit, he, you probably handed me one of your CDs. And, and I had mentioned yeah. to her I that thought, I do oh. stuff that's kind of Windham Hill, New Age. And I think, you know, I think at the time, I was going through kind of a change where I wasn't really, I was kind of getting tired of being a jukebox. Yeah. Doing cover songs. And I was looking for something more. I, you know, that, something more. That's funny. Pun. Sugar Land. <laughs> um, I was looking for something more along the line as a career, as a, as an artist to be touring and stuff like that. And I went over and uh, started recording on a couple of her songs, Earth and mm-hmm. Wood. Woodlands, Woodlands? Yeah. Off her Sanctuary... Sanctuary 2. 2 album. Which was my second New Age And then album. I had her come in to the studio where I was recording at to play on a song. And I think it was then that we kind of looked at each other, and I kind of put everything off to this. I was like, you know what? Why don't we do an album? Yeah. And we kind of agreed, you know? It's like, well, let's try this. So we, we took some songs that I had recorded before on my first album, and then we started... You know, creating. I had other songs in the bank, and then we started creating songs together. And honestly, we haven't looked back since. It's, nice. it's been. It was like we kind of musically knew each other our whole lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like we're on the same plane when we play. Like <laughs> the Nirvana, you know, that it's, wave, it's, you and know. that <laughs> does not happen all the time when mm. you play with other musicians. So it's, I think, very rare. Yeah, when you can kind of read your musical partner's mind and know where they're going and heading and you can just follow there. What do you attest that to? What do you? I think we knew each other in another life. You know, <laughs> I, I think, you know, it, it's weird. It, and, it, and as Sherry said, that yeah. is correct. It's not everybody. Yeah. Um, I can sit there and I don't know, 90% of the time we don't play the song exactly as it is on there. So, but we look out in the audience, and I think the energy causes me to kind of redirect the song a little bit. Or as Sherry mm-hmm. will, she'll hold a note, and I know where she's going with yeah. it, and I'll accommodate that. And there's times we'll be on stage. I mean, we, you know, there's hundreds of people out there, and we kind of just out of the corner of our eye look at each other. And we got this like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm with you on this, yeah. and. That, I get chills right now talking about it. Yeah. That's what keeps me going because as two people yeah. um, musically connected as uh, Sherry and I are, um, we can do that. We can, God, you know, we've, we've had bad ones. I mean, there's just times it just feels like the energy isn't there and stuff like that. It's not always but most perfect. Of the time, well, that gig no. we did in... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes the sound is kind of crappy. Yeah, the sound kind of has to do it. We did a show. So we had a bad... Not a real bad show. It wasn't bad. It wasn't it was bad. It was just, just the sound wasn't right. Yeah. yeah. And on the tour, I'm kind of in charge of setting up the sound and making sure everything sounds good. Everything sounded good when we left to go back to the ho- the yeah. cabin to get you know dressed and relax. And we came back... <laughs> It was like somebody walked up and just took all the knobs. <laughs> and yeah. so, but we put, you know, as a professional, you have to t- plug yeah. through that. So we kind of left that. It was a little bad taste in the mouth. And the next gig, you know, we're like, oh, okay, we get there. And it just, it just takes all of a sudden, you can tell pretty much on the first note, then we start playing. Yeah. It's like, oh, the sound's there. Yeah. yeah. It's great. And you look at the people while you're playing and you pick a person and you play to that person. Yeah. And, she sees what I'm doing, and I see what she's doing. I, and by mean see, it's it's a different. It's like hearing, but we see that. Yeah, I can pause, and I'm not even looking at her, and she yeah just flows right back in at the same. Because usually, spot. I mean, I play with my eyes closed most of the yeah, time. Me too. <laughs> so we're not even looking at each other. Yeah. We're just you know mental telepathy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now you say when you met in Greer, you were. You had two albums out already? Um, Two-ish? Yeah, I had done Sanctuary in 2009 was my first New Age album. Um, So that was my first dabble in that genre. Um, So I was working on my my second one, and I had only recorded maybe one or two songs, I think, when I met Darren. Who were you recording with? Was this your own label? or? Um, Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. so my label is Heart Dance Recordings. And no, uh, when did you start Heart Dance? Uh, 2009. And why? I mean, well, it started with just my own music. Yeah. Um, and then I started taking on other artists. So I think um, when Darren and I recorded together, that was the first one of the first albums with um, another artist. And so now I've done other collaborations and I've brought other artists onto the label because I really want, I really want this music to get out to the world and affect people in a healing manner. Yeah. What what drove you to start your own label though? Was it was there not a market for you to go elsewhere, or do you? Oh, nobody knew just who more I was. Creative? Yeah, nobody knew me yeah. back then. Um, <laughs> back then. And I had, way back then. <laughs> I had uh, had the opportunity to work with Will Ackerman, the uh-huh. the, the guy of Wyndham Hill, and it, New Age Markets is a little hard to. It's it's a get very in there because small yeah. genre. Wyndham Hill was the 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 got it was the it was the pinnacle yeah and I seen Sherry because I you know I I was sitting on the outside watching this and I could see Sherry and once Sherry gets determined there's no <laughs> stopping her and I think she just kind of got tired of like look this music is just as good. Mm-hmm. So how do we do this? How does this happen? And she, you know, she figured all this out, and she got she got this label up and going, and started bringing on other artists. Yeah, I believe I was the first artist mm-hmm. I that think she so. brought on. I, I but um, so. <laughs> and then she started getting other artists, and then she started. You know, we when you're an artist, you pay people to promote you through the the radio stations mm-hmm. and the college radio, the terrestrial, mm-hmm. XM. You know, all that stuff. And I think Sherry just thought that maybe she could do this a little bit better. Yeah. Exactly. A little more control, a little more freedom to do what you want. Well, also for a lot of musicians, um, they're struggling musicians. Or they have a day job and they're trying to do music on the side. So they don't have you know, $50,000 to invest (laughs) to promote their album. Uh, So I wanted to find... Uh, a way to do it that would be less expensive. Um, and didn't uh, have to play the game. And yeah. yes, um, I just want to put good music on there. You know, there's no bribery. There's no mm-hmm. pay for play. It's Payola. just, I'm just Ooh. putting good music out there and it's getting heard and mm. it's getting recognition. There's a new and, sheriff in town. <laughs> when you decided to embark on on your label, what was the biggest surprise? Something you didn't expect, either good or bad. I mean, you know, anytime you hit a new venture, you're like, "Oh, I didn't expect that," or this challenge came up. Was there anything that sticks out that well, caught you by surprise? Um, yes. Sometimes I was surprised by people discouraging me or telling me I can't do it. So uh, that's one thing you don't want to do. You tell me I. Sure, you can't do that. You better look out because that's how this all came about. We have a documentary <laughs> coming out. And there is an episode in there where Sherry gives this look. <laughs> and it we're jokingly, but it's this look that Sherry gives. And when Sherry when you see that look on Sherry, just stand back. <laughs> now, now the documentary that was being filmed when you guys did your tour this summer? Yes. Talk mm-hmm. a little bit about the tour. I talked with Darren a little bit about Mm-hmm. the 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 process of going out and booking the gigs and everything. Yeah. Give me your take. How was it? Um, it was fun. It's it's a lot of driving. So hey. there's days that are really long and you get really really tired. Um, but doing the show and playing for the people that are there makes it really worthwhile. Making those connections yeah. and we love doing the smaller intimate shows like house concerts. Yeah, because then we can just sit and chat with people nice. afterwards and really get to know them. Went up through Colorado. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, where did we start? Uh, Durango. Durango. <laughs> at, the, <laughs> at the yurt. At the yurt. <laughs> yeah, we had some really new, different beautiful place. experiences beautiful on this places. tour, too. Um, so, yeah, it was a musical yurt uh, on top of this mountain uh, in somebody's backyard uh, that was just filled with the most amazing instruments. 
Um, so that was great. And then we went on and did a house concert in Colorado Springs. Yeah, that was a long drive the next day. That was a long <laughs> drive because we were up very late. Very late. After the concert because all of the party our concert attendees decided to stay and party. <laughs> Till 4.30 in the morning. And lobby call was 6.30. Six. So we were supposed to be on the road. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned for the documentary. So, yeah, I was just say, where, where are we at on that? On the documentary? On the documentary, yeah. Um, I did not tell Darren this, but um, Jonah is tweaking a few things okay. to the video. So... I think after this weekend, I should have the final edit. So I'm nice. hoping by the end of this month, it'll be out. What's going to be the format where people can find that? You're going to stream it? Go to. Some um, of the- we're putting it up on YouTube and probably Facebook. Mm-hmm. I'll upload directly to Facebook because that seems to get more more views these days than yeah. YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's a whole Until the next topic. big thing comes up. That's right. Yeah, the it's like, how do you thing. stay on top of it? It's, well, you don't. What you do is do what I did and yeah. uh, come into Twitter uh, four years too late, yeah. Facebook five years too late. I did yeah. just recently, and I don't know what, what made me do this, but I went in and updated my MySpace page. Oh my Do you still have a MySpace God. page? <laughs> well, tell Tom I said hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I was I was uh, I forget what I was doing. I was doing something where I was sitting at my computer waiting. I don't know if I was on hold or with somebody, but I had my laptop up, and I I don't know what started. I said, I wonder if I still. So I dug through my old email that I don't even use anymore, and my login information was in there. Wow! And I logged in, and it was a uh, it was a. Uh, Still active, <laughs> but it, so it's still there. It's MySpace. still there. It has not mm-hmm. died yet. I haven't heard anybody talk about well, it. Tom I'll... was my first friend <laughs> on MySpace. <laughs> Although I did see a musician's website just a few days ago that had a MySpace link, and I was like, "Wow, is MySpace still around?" Yeah, but I think you can only get to it through rotary dial-up. Oh, in a, no, I just... <laughs> well, miss that sound, dude. No, I yeah AOL. <laughs> but I. uh I only started it because of photos I was doing for bands and musicians. That was the big thrust of of their publicity for, especially on the on the on the smaller markets and the smaller venues. Was MySpace. The musicians yeah. were really using it, and I had to trade information. They go, "Well, what's your MySpace page?" I said, "I don't have one." So I started it, used it for about six months for a couple of projects. And then never touched it again it. till about four months ago. <laughs> this was like two thousand seven. Well, I actually, uh, I was using MySpace, MySpace when I first moved out here in two thousand five, and I actually met a few musicians yeah. that way that I started playing with. It was huge for the musicians. So yeah. when you started Heart Dance, and me being your first artist, mm-hmm. from that point till now, do you have an a, a guesstimation on how many artists you have now on Heart Dance? Um, I have, I believe, nine. Full label artists. And this is another thing I wanted to do with my label. I wanted to have a variety of options for the artists. So they can be full label artists or I can just distribute for yeah. them physically and digitally. And some artists, I have a couple artists that I only do physical distribution mm-hmm. for for international. So I've got lots of You've different You've got music on options. international airlines, Qantas and all that. Yeah. Nice. Um, We've got music on the Sirius XM Spa channel, um, which is which is big. Um, multiple international airlines, overhead music channels, um, radio stations around the world. So nice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did do I do that? I don't know. <laughs> do you by someone telling you you couldn't do it? You can't do that. <laughs> you can't be this and this and this. You know, I I. I you know, there's a there's a big awards show every year in New Orleans called the ZMR, the Zone Music mm-hmm. Reporter Awards, and it is a radio show voted, you know, members kind of thing. And I know the first year we went, you know, Sherry was kind of you know in the buzz, you know, and then the the three years later, Sherry is a force to be reckoned with. People know who she is now, and and as as her friend, I I couldn't be more proud yeah. of her because I, I I I seen where she came from, and seen how determined she was, mm-hmm. and it's just it, it will tell the people out there listening that if you are very determined and you want it bad enough, yeah, you can get it, and, and that's Sherry's proof of that. Now, mention some of your other artists. Of course, we got Darren, but who else? Got Darren. 
Um, Will Clipman did the Trialog CD with us, percussionist from mm-hmm. Tucson. Michelle Kreshi is from Indiana, so she's a guitar player as well, but really a multi instrumentalist. Um, Scott Kasu's on the label. He used to be with Wyndham Hell uh, mm. back in the day, uh, pianist. Um, we've got Michael Kent Smith is newer to the label. He is from Chicago originally, lives in Mexico now. Um, Kent Verhicke is from South Dakota, another amazing guitar player. And his There's album releases tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, oh, it's nice. called Consider the Moon and Stars. And uh, he uses electric guitar on most of the tracks on that album. Uh, it's almost more of a chill groove kind of mm-hmm. feel. Uh, a little bit, still in the new age genre, but a little edgier, I think. Um, Lynn Trudeau. Solo pianist. Uh, Matthew Schilt lives up in, uh, we met him up in Colorado Colorado. on our tour. Um, He teaches at one of the universities in Alamosa. Um, Who else do we have? Looking. I need my my screen. They are all at heartdancerecordings.com. Heartdancerecordings.com. Nice. Links to all of them, touring info. Um, yeah, stuff. links to all the recordings and their websites. So. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, Tom Moore. Tom Moore. Tom Moore is down in Phoenix. Um, so I've done two collaborations with him. That's more meditational. Now, music. are you primarily distribution? Do you also do the recording? What's the? No, I don't have a studio. Um, I like to use John Herrera Studio, Clamsville Studios, down in Phoenix when is, we can. Is that where you? Been recently, I have that we did our transformation and our trilog album there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first three or four songs on the album I recorded at Will Ackerman's studio mm-hmm. in Vermont, Imaginary Roads. And then the next few that I'm recording, I'll be recording with uh, Cass Attaway's studio in mm-hmm. uh, Cave Creek, I believe. Yeah, so Cass, um, I did an album with Cass, and we go under the name Majestica. Um, and we almost have the second album done, <laughs> the second Majestica album done. It's been so close to being done for months now, and we're going to get there <laughs> soon. What's the uh, ratio, I guess is the best word, between your time and energy performing as an artist or as a owner of the label? What? Well, I also have the promotions company, which does the whole radio campaign <laughs> yeah. to get the music out there. So I do that for label artists, and then I also do it for other new age artists. Yeah. So it's funny. I was uh, over New Year's weekend. I, you know, set my goals for the year and my plans, and so I've got it designated. Where were you doing your goal planning, <laughs> Sherry? I was doing it on the beach. <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> I tried to do one of those, but first on the list was find a pencil, and I couldn't. So I just I wanted to send her a picture of me sitting in my barn, goal planning. I actually called them. I called you. You did. The beach. She called me from the beach. I'm like, hey, what date are we getting your album done? I pictured that scene from Trading Places at the end with Eddie Murphy and looking good, Lewis. <laughs> Uh, uh, in that movie, I'm the guy in the gorilla suit. There I think. you go. <laughs> um, I, I try to split it evenly, but uh, to be honest, um, my music comes last <laughs> because I'm so busy yeah. promoting everybody else. So I'll try to do spend my mornings doing uh, the radio promotion, spend the afternoons doing the label uh, yeah. stuff and trying to get it out for licensing and things like that. And then I go work out and then I come back and that's that's sherry time and a lot of times I I didn't get all the other stuff done so I'm trying to finish that so it's um do you find that since your you as an artist time is more limited does it make it that much more valuable and more enjoyable um yeah sometimes I get a little unnerved because I'm like oh I haven't played my flute in three days um so I'm trying to figure all that out right now. <laughs> yeah, what I find is with the podcast, with radio, with writing more, mm-hmm. uh, it used to be, for me, it used to be photography 12, 16 hours a day, seven days a week, and that's mm-hmm. all I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that it's taking a smaller portion of my time, I'm finding that when I am in studio shooting or if I'm doing product stuff or sports, whatever, I enjoy it a lot more because I'm yeah. not doing it as yeah. much as I did. 
Well, I remember my husband saying when we were getting ready to go on tour, what are you looking forward to going on tour? I go, not sitting in front of my computer. (laughs) So let me tell you what she did. We get in the car and we start, we left Cottonwood Uh and we get out of Flagstaff a little ways. We're heading up to the four corners. Yeah. And we just get out of Flagstaff. Now comes a laptop. (laughs) But, you know, I I I work. I have to work on the road. She's working and I... We've toured before. Me and Sherry have toured, toured before together, and it's effortless with me and her because yeah. she does her stuff, and I'm driving. I'm I'm quiet. We got the radio on, and then every now and then, Sherry will just close the laptop and look over and go, Darren. <laughs> it, it scares me. It's like, oh God, here it goes, you know. But we well, one time we played the the license plate game. <laughs> The, or yeah. the, the the alphabet game, you know, looking for the... <laughs> and she's over here on her phone looking for something that has Q that's coming up in a town, you know. To, oh, yeah. quality in, Q! <laughs> <laughs> now, Darren... You told me a story about when you when you were on uh, on your trip, and I'd like Sherry, and I'm probably going to get it wrong. Yeah. Uh, big traffic jam? Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. We'll, we'll read it. It's, it's also in Darren's episode, which is episode blankety blank blank, because I don't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah. But t- relay that to us. I enjoyed it. Well, we had stopped to watch the eclipse, and was it Gunnison? Gunnison, Colorado. Gunnison, Colorado. We're on our way to Grand Junction. We had a two o'clock appointment at Fox, Fox oh, Radio yeah. News Show to do a TV spot. Yeah. So we were kind of on a deadline to get there to do this, uh, the TV interview. And <laughs> I think we were, we were punchy by then for <laughs> sure because we did not get a lot of sleep on this door. No, we did not. And uh, yeah, so we saw the construction site up ahead. And I'm thinking in my head, oh my God, as soon as he stops, I'm getting out of this, getting out of this <laughs> truck. And he's slowing down. He puts it in park, and I look, and he's got his hand on the seatbelt, and we both, at the <laughs> same exact time, our seatbelts come off, we fling the doors open, he cranks up the radio, and we just jump out and start dancing. It was Queens, another one bites the dust. <laughs> and it was so much fun. Be glad it was a construction zone and not a DUI our, checkpoint. Our touring, <laughs> our touring partners behind us, Jonah and Art Patience, they get out of the car, and Art, uh, Jonah's, the, he's doing the documentary. He's got yeah. a camera. Yeah. And we did. We just like, no care in the world. Beautiful scenery, the lake. And... Oh, it was a beautiful day. And it's like, what else are you going to do? We're, you know, we're tired so, of sitting in the so car. So what did you do next, Sherry? <laughs> so then the I grabbed. The kicked in? I, I grabbed. <laughs> exactly, buddy. Her, her mind just kicks right in. I go, give me some CDs. So I take a stack of CDs and I start just running down you know, <laughs> most say probably pert near a quarter mile down the road. She's running, and I'm looking, going. I hope the flag guy doesn't go. Okay, traffic, come on, <laughs> pick you up on the way back. <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, I'm going to all the cars, uh, people in the cars. Would you like a free CD? And some are like, uh, no, <laughs> no, we don't want that. Away, you know, but uh, a lot of people took. Them. Well, I think they thought I was going to ask them for ten bucks yeah. after I get yeah. the CD. And they're like, well, or what do you, know, you what want? Is it? I go, it's free. Just you know, you got a very pretty lady walking up to your car. And they, they, they're, they're cracking the windows like an inch. And look, I'm going, what do you want? That was probably the wise. <laughs> yeah, yes, you exactly. It that was room. the wise. <laughs> but honey, she might need help. <laughs> she might need a lift. You should have went up to the window and looked at the guy and go, remember me? Remember me? <laughs> Yeah, so it was so funny to see all those reactions. Uh, so you had a great tour, didn't get any rest, and broke up nine marriages. Oh my gosh, we went in. We 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 arrived in Grand Junction with about ten minutes to spare to be on air. Yeah, and I had my shorts on. Oh, you guys had and changed. sandals. So I just put pants on, put my boots over my bare feet, and we go in the back. <laughs> and, and it's literally, and we walk, and we're on the Wait air. Wait a minute. Wait, did you still have your shorts on? No, I had to put I the pants on. No, I'm shorts in the car. And boots? Yeah. That, I'm in the, that's a good look. I'm in the car changing. <laughs> that and, could be, oh. you could have a third or fourth career as uh, the member of the <laughs> yep. new village people. The village people. <laughs> just missed my shaps yeah. right there. <laughs> Cutoffs, boots, mm-hmm. and a uh, little belly shirt. <laughs> we, we really, we had, we had a really, 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 really good time. In fact, weren't we? It was your birthday. 
It was my birthday coming back. Yeah, we were in Moab, and we were in a diner, (laughs) and Sherry went to the restroom, and me and the guys got together, and says, well, when she's come back, we're going to sing happy birthday, and let everybody else know. <laughs> and so, Did you yeah, run out and get your guitar? Yeah, I wish. Do a, do a little yeah. impromptu show. I was pretty much it. done with the guitar for that day. You know, I was like, you know, when you when you're done with the tour, you're ready to get yeah, back you just home. Get and, home. Yeah. yeah. So what's next on tap for Heart Dance? What are we looking for? Oh well, most of the artists on the label they all are planning new releases this year, so we'll have nice. a lot of new releases. Um, and the doc coming out shortly. Yeah, mm-hmm. April, we're shooting for April. Yeah, we did a little sneak premiere uh, here at the house. My folks were here in that, and yeah, get ready to be in stitches. It's funny, nice, you know. We, and the nice thing about it, every show that we did, Jonah went around and talked to the audience. Yeah, you'd mention that. And That's going to be nice. It was kind of neat because we really didn't get to see any of this. And to hear the other people's interpretations of our shows and what it did for them, yeah. that, I mean, that makes us want to go back out and do more. Nice. It plans set up for another one or? Oh, I'm sure talking we, we've stages got something going along. You know, my, my, my solo, per se, album is going to have, is Sherry's, Sherry's yeah. on. You know, so we, we can still go out and push those and do the stuff that we do. I would, I would like to maybe next year uh, possibly doing another duo album with mm. sherry nice but you know what we could use is a booking agent because <laughs> that takes a lot of time yes so if you know anybody yeah i know a lot of people i don't know Anybody's a lot of people listening. worth talking to. talking to <laughs> <laughs> i know people i know people but nobody, nobody wants nobody to you'd to want to meet because that is, uh, <laughs> is very time consuming yeah. and you know the logistics well anything else you want to hit mm. we get Besides me. To talk. <laughs> you, <laughs> the big one. You yeah. The uh, again, your personal stuff where folks can find out about oh, sure. you as an artist, your promotion company, as well as Heart Dance. Give us your commercials, your, uh, contacts again. Yeah. So um, to learn more about me and my music, you can visit sherryfinzer.com. Uh, to learn more about Heart Dance, you can go to heartdancerecordings.com. And uh, the promotions company, if you're a new age artist looking for radio promotions, rspromotionsus.com. And of course, we've uh, got social media pages on Facebook. I don't do a lot with Twitter. Mm -hmm. I'm on there, but um, I mostly focus on Facebook. It would be great if people could follow us on YouTube because that's where the documentary is going to be aired, as well as Facebook. I have a Sherry Fenzer music page on Facebook. There's a Heart Dance recordings page on Facebook. Um, and Spotify. Mm-hmm. We're trying to gather followers on Spotify nice. because everything's going to streaming now. Um, so if anybody would like to follow us on Spotify, we'd greatly appreciate that. Or create a station on Pandora. You can mm-hmm. create a Sherry Finzer uh-huh. station. You can create a Darren Mahoney station. You can create a Sherry Finzer and Darren Mahoney station. <laughs> Yeah. Well, nice. I will put links to. Are we blasting again? I don't know what to. I will put links uh, in the show notes for the websites and social media and your YouTube oh, page. Oh, thank, you. thank you. In in on the on our website milehighshow dot com, we put some photos and we'll do some video clips in there as well. Mm-hmm. So that'll be nice. Thank well, you. thanks. You're gonna thank play you. us a little something. Yeah, we'll play a few tunes for yeah. you. If you well, wanna. let me let me kick this down and we'll plug in the camera. I'll get some video cool. clips of it. Well, thank you so much. That thank was you, Sherry. That was a lot of fun. Thank for you, driving Darren. all the way up to Chino, Chino Valley, Valley, Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> Did you take her over to Big Daddy's for lunch? Actually, if you guys are <laughs> not doing anything a little later, I can take you to lunch. The unofficial sponsor of the Mile yep. High Show, Big yeah. Daddy's. Uh, Hello, Eric. No, I got, I've got a... Uh, the boss gets up. Uh, okay.
<laughs> Thank you.